right, Kyle, it's time to break down the Lincoln Riley Bowl as we have a matchup between two former Oklahoma Sooners, two former first overall picks, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray. In the past, Kyler Murray has had the advantage when these two have gone against each other on the field. Both teams, one and two, the Panthers versus the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals threw the three games. Their one win, that comeback against the Raiders. The Panthers, their one win coming last week against the Saints. Their two losses, a little bit of heartbreakers. And I know early on, I thought that the Carolina Panthers maybe could make a little bit of noise, maybe do something in the NFC South. Those two losses loom large, but they did save their season by not going 0-3. So there still is an opportunity for them. It's just a matter of, can they get a little bit more exciting on offense through three games? Christian McCaffrey really hasn't done much. And play calling, I think that there's something to be desired to get this offense going. (laughs) They have like one to two big plays a game. Uh, Baker Mayfield has had a few moments where he's been able to sling it or find a guy wide open deep. And that's kind of more or less where their points have come from. But they just can't consistently move the ball. What do you think of this matchup between the two teams? So you're saying that Ben McAdoo leaves more to be desired. You're saying that uh, Ben McAdoo doesn't necessarily inspire confidence as a a man who looks like he got fired from his job a month ago and is still gets dressed to go to work every day because he's too ashamed to tell his wife. You're saying that Ben McAdoo doesn't exactly inspire confidence within an offense. If not the hair gel look, it's mostly just in terms of what I've seen so far from the Carolina Panthers. Yes, I, I totally get that. The, the The biggest problem is Ben McAdoo, but the bigger problem is also what we kind of knew before, which is Baker Mayfield is kind of a fringe starting quarterback in the NFL. If uh, the right situation opens up, he'll get to play. But I imagine a couple of years from now, he'll be one of those journeyman backups roaming through the NFL like Teddy Bridgewater or Jacoby Brissett or someone like that. But yeah, even last week in their win, Baker Mayfield had a below 50% completion percentage before he threw that touchdown to Lavishka Chenault, which was uh, a short pass that was mostly yards after catch. And he'll his quarterback rating will look okay. I think he finished like with 83. But yeah, even in the win, Baker Mayfield didn't really play that well. Yeah, McCaffrey obviously leaves more through, to be desired. Through three games, Baker Mayfield's game log in terms of completion percentage, week one, 59.3%. Week two, 48.3% and then 48 against the Saints. That's a very ugly stat line because wasn't Baker's claim to fame that he was one of the more accurate? It could have been like another version of Drew Brees, shorter quarterback, but Elise is accurate. Yeah, it's kind of just Baker Mayfield. When you put that uh, when you put that Shanahan offense around him, and obviously Stefanski runs that same type of system, when you put that offense in there, it starts to look a little bit better for Baker because it's predicated on a lot of short passes, zone runs, et cetera. And uh, when you put Ben McAdoo in there, we realize just how hard Baker Mayfield can fall, which is the the thing that makes Baker Mayfield look like a backup is that he's going to have the game like uh, against, uh, I think it was the Packers last year where he had like four interceptions and, basically took the team out of the game and that's the sign of what makes you a backup quarterback is when you have that one game that makes everyone look up and be like oh my god what just happened there and it's coming at some point for baker he's just kind of been consistently poor but carolina's still a fine team <laughs> i know we we've gone back and forth about the carolina defense the carolina defense actually does look legitimately good this year or at least they did against the saints offense that in another video i said i just have no idea how to evaluate so good on the panthers defense so far this year again going up against the cardinals it's going to be interesting because arizona one of the biggest concerns as someone who helps produce an arizona cardinals podcast one of the biggest concerns that's been around for the cardinals is really uncreative play calling uh conservative game scripts coming out and, and ultimately leading to punts because uh, they're they're trying to do things against even not great defenses like the Raiders or, and the Rams, I know, have a better defense and they were up in their face the whole time. But like even against not great defenses, there there wasn't a whole lot to be desired offensively for Arizona. They haven't used the tight ends the way they they maybe intended to, which is strange because they have three quality tight ends and they haven't really used two tight end sets 
Uh, their running game is abysmal to start the season for Arizona and uh, leaves a lot more to be desired, given that like we saw Arizona start seven and oh last year with a team that obviously I know DeAndre Hopkins isn't there, but like a team that at least you could look at what Arizona has now and say it's not that dissimilar from the team that was awesome to start last year. So uh, I don't know exactly what the deal is there. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see those two offenses play because I think the over under in this game is I'm going to guess somewhere in the forties. And I just don't really know how to evaluate that. Cause it's hard to bet on any team to score over 20 points when they're quarterback by Baker Mayfield. 43.5 is the over under 43.5. I mean, I've all, all, people always tend to bet the overs on these things. So the real line is probably closer to 40 and, uh, Gosh, that would, it would need Arizona to come out like guns blazing to start. And I just don't know if that's Arizona's identity at this point. Major injuries for the Carolina Panthers. So they do have some injuries in their secondary. I just don't know how that balances out with the Cardinals wide receiving core. So a couple weeks from DeAndre Hopkins coming back and having that wide receiving core at full strength. At one and two, this is kind of one of those games that kind of like tips the scales of how far these teams can respectively go. Like I said, I thought Carolina saved their season by not going 0-3 last week. I feel as though if they go 1-3, and they'll be out because it's going to be hard for that team to really battle back with an offense that, like I said, is struggling to move the football at times. Uh, With Arizona, similar type thing. If they go 1-3, and the Rams are starting to kind of like pull away from them a little bit and then I just don't see them going for the wild card at that point this is a big game for both these teams Carolina last season I believe they got the victory in this matchup I think Colt McCoy was starting I think that was during when uh, Kyler Murray was out Uh, yeah that was the uh, I'm back (laughs) I'm back this is after Colt McCoy just absolutely slaughtered my Niners I believe too a week removed from that Uh, The Panthers are one and a half point favorites in this game. If the Cardinals are struggling like they are offensively, given what I've seen from the Carolina Panthers defense, I think that they'll make one or two big plays during this game. And I think that as long as Baker Mayfield can throw closer to 60% this week, I think they could get this win. I think that Vegas is right in this being a close game. I'm going to go with Carolina Panthers. I think that they defend home and uh, even up their record this week. You know, the evidence is leading with you, not just the fact that the Panthers are favorites, which kind of caught me off guard a bit, but also 81% of the bets on the money line are coming in on Arizona and 91% of the bets are on Carolina, which means that if the Arizona were to win, Vegas stands to lose a whole bunch of money on this game. And they keep moving the line in favor of Carolina, despite the fact that all the bets keep coming in on Arizona. So Vegas is with you, Juju Vegas thinks Carolina is a big money play and uh, they can uh, keep adding to those gigantic towers that they have out there in Nevada, Carolina. I feel like I know what they are. They're going to finish third in that division. They're going to be two games out of the playoffs with two to play, and they're going to get eliminated in week 17 from playoff contention, but they'll still be alive because third? Carolina will have a 38 way tiebreaker. They might be better than the saints. They that probably are definitely. better than the saints. They beat the saints. That can't, I mean, it could be that whole division is terrible. It's every, every, if you're, if you play in a division with South on it and you aren't the bucks, you're just terrible. Um, I'll give you, they're better than the Falcons week three. They were better than the saints. Okay. That is a fair point. And I will say if Carolina makes the playoffs and Arizona doesn't, that is a damning indictment on everyone in the Arizona organization. And someone needs to be fired. Probably Vance Joseph, but someone needs to be fired if Carolina makes the playoffs and you don't because Arizona has more talent across the board on that team. I would have guessed that Arizona would have been like a field goal favorite in this game uh, based on like regular season looking on the teams on paper. So obviously the evidence has changed in regards to how people feel about both of these teams. I'm going to just be a contrarian and take the Cardinals, which goes against Vegas and who's just the favorite in the game. But I don't feel great about it. I don't feel great about it. Confidence in Arizona is waning, especially. I love Kyler Murray. He's amazing, but everything around Kyler Murray seems to be letting him down early on in the season, especially the coaching staff and play calling in Arizona, which is saying something given that they're going up against Ben McAdoo and that play calling. 
Okay, guys, who wins this matchup of two former Oklahoma quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield versus Kyler Murray? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Even more interesting if you are a Sooners fan. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, find all our social media info in the YouTube bio. Stay safe, happy, and healthy, and we'll see you on the next one.